Hi guys, this is another chapter of Friend or Fiction. I think I last left off on chapter 13. It's called The Window Seat. I practically flew out of bed the next morning, just like I had the day before, but for a slightly different reason. I didn't need to chase Clue down for my notebook, but I did need the fun to start as soon as possible. For the second time this week, and possibly for the second time forever, I didn't want to press my snooze alarm a thousand times and then drag myself through the motions of getting ready for school. I wanted to speed through them while twirling, maybe like a famous award-winning author. School, I thought to myself as I brushed my teeth, washed my face, and got dressed. School, with a real best friend, with the best best friend. While I was getting ready, Bo had finished his picture of a lamp defeating the bad guy. We hugged mom and dad goodbye and then we were off. I grabbed his hand and pulled him up Zoe's front walk. She opened the door before we even knocked. This day was already amazing and it had barely begun. Good morning, Zoe shouted. We laughed. Good morning back, I said as she closed the door behind her. Don't you have to say bye to your mom and dad? Bo asked. Zoe, Zoe tilted her head. No, not really. Why? he asked. Her head stayed where it was. I'm not sure. Why? he asked again. I don't think I have them. Why? yet again. Tomorrow, I was so asking mom to bake Bo, take Bo to school. I live by myself, Zoe answered. Okay, uh, enough about that, I said, trying to change the subject. It's sunny outside. Who likes the sun? Yay, weather! I think because, you know, Zoe's a made-up character, and that because um, she was, she never was really written, you know, Jade never wrote about Zoe's parents, and I think that's why Zoe who's kind of real, doesn't have any parents to say goodbye to because Jay didn't write them. And I think she realizes that right now, and that's why she's trying to hurry Bo along. Zoe and Bo laughed and started talking about how great spring was. I hung back and peered at Zoe's little house over my shoulder. It looks so much like ours. Same brick exterior and bright red door, but instead of four people crammed inside of it, there was just her. I never really wrote about her family, or even mine all that much. So it made sense that she didn't have parents to live with. I was right. I never wrote them into life. She had no one telling her when to go to bed, what to eat, what chores to do. No one making her walk her annoying little brother to school. She could do anything she wanted any time. I don't want to admit that I'd been a little worried about having so much control over Zoe, but when she was home, the power was totally hers. I took a big breath, grinned, and hurried to catch up. I wonder if that's really as great as Jade is thinking it is. I mean, could you imagine being at home all alone by yourself? I can't really imagine that. Hey, can we talk? A familiar voice stopped by my locker. What's up? I asked Clue. Well, I went to the pond last night and tried to get the magic to work for me with my notebook, but it didn't happen. I think it might only work for one person at a time. Your notebook? I'd seen him holding the same green one before. I just figured it was for school stuff. Yeah, he held it up. You're not the only one who writes, you know. What do you write about? I didn't know why I was curious. Could be a writer thing. Mrs. Yang says writing isn't just putting pen to paper. It's thinking and planning and talking to others about it, too. Besides, he knew what I wrote about it, so it was only fair that I got to know what he was writing about. Clue looked at his shoes. Oh, a person. Sort of like what you do. Anyway, he snapped back to attention. It's okay that it didn't work yet. I guess. I should probably observe Zoe more and see how everything plays out before I try to bring my person into the world. I raised my eyebrows at him. 
There were a lot of weird things about what he just said. See how everything plays out before he brings his person into the world? Does that mean he was going to swap Zoe out for someone else? What? I must have had a super stressed out look on my face because Clue shot me a reassuring smile. Look, I'm going to do my best to make this work out for both of us. I won't make Zoe disappear without talking to you first. Try to trust me, okay? Even with that smile, trusting him did not sound like the most most possible thing in the world. Trust you? You stole my notebook, but for good reason. Besides, you didn't like you didn't even like me before that," said Clue. "You were always glaring at me, even when I tried to help you out. What did I ever do to you before now?" Clue looked seriously upset. And for a second, I almost felt bad for him, but only a second. And only the littlest bad feeling humanly possible. Yeah, you did something other than take my notebook, I told Clue. Zoe is a better friend than you'll ever be. Even if you do know all the answers to everything, even if you somehow brought her to life. I slammed my locker shut and went to go find her. He obviously didn't remember that stealing my notebook wasn't the first bad thing he'd done. At one of the first hospital visits during the winter Dad started treatments, the nurse took all of us to his teeny chemo room with the boring white walls and no windows. The staff had given Bo and me lollipops and told us how brave we were for going to chemo with Dad which is pretty silly. We just had to sit there. He was the one who had to get poked and prodded and have all those toopy things sticking out of him. I don't want to be a bother, Mom had said to the nurse, but last time we were here, we were in a room with a window. He looks, he likes looking out at the trees and the birds. It makes the time go a lot faster. Lila, Dad said softly, gently rubbing her wrist. It's fine. Other people like the window seat too. It's not only us that's in here. <sighs> I know, said Mom. Every single person here deserves a window. <sighs> when cancer's trying to get you, you should get a window. I looked at the floor and pretended to be invisible. But Bo clutched giraffe and listened to Mom like she was telling the most suspenseful, suspenseful bedtime story of all time. The vibe in that room got super weird then. The air seemed really heavy and it made my stomach feel so twisted and my brain so jumbly that I could hardly catch my breath. The walls hadn't seemed so bad to me at first, but suddenly it was like they were closing in and squishing me the whole, squishing me whole. <sighs> I'm going to the bathroom, I croaked. I grabbed my notebook and rushed out of there as fast as I could. That was when I saw him. Gresham, Gorham, the kid at school with all the answers who'd been in Tavea longer than me. He was standing in the front of a room on the other side of the hallway, a room that had the window. And it was just not into any window, a big one with lots of birds and trees on the other side. Hi, Clue, I whispered. Hey, he said. We stood there silently. He pointed to my notebook. Why are you always writing in that at school, he asked. I guess... I was known for writing in my notebook, like he was known for giving all the answers, or giving everyone clues in class. The funny feeling in my stomach sped up to my throat. My stories, I blurted out, I write about a made-up girl named Zoe. We do a lot of fun stuff together, like we sing and dance and hang out at the pond. We're sort of best friends. My face turned red the second I said it. I think what's the author trying to tell us how she's feeling about the fact that I didn't feel like myself because of all the new dad having cancer stuff didn't make it okay just to spill private information like that. I tried to change the subject. Are you here with your parents? Yep, he said, his eyes stay glued to my notebook. My dad and my pops are around here somewhere. Do they work here? No, we're just here. He said, for a guy so good at sharing his hints, he sure wasn't giving anything away now. I pointed behind him. Are they somewhere in this giant room? 
He shook his head. So it's free? I let up a big breath as my whole body relaxed. How cool would it be if I go back to mom and dad and Bo and tell them I got a room with a window? But then Clue said, no, it's not free. Oh, and just like that, all of the seat for dad by the window stuff went, well, right out the window. I went back to our closet of a room and wrote stories while Bo and Giraffe drew pictures. Mom played classical music from her phone and stared at the walls probably imagining how she liked to open them up so Dad could see outside. And Dad sat in his giant chair with all the tuby things and closed his eyes. He smiled, but he was sad. I could tell. Wasn't exactly sure about what. The cancer, the walls, the picture Bo made of him defeating the bad guys where the kid kind of looked like a zebra. Where, where he kind of looked like a zebra. Whatever it was, it made me sad too. Eventually, I had to go to the bathroom for real. It felt like hours since we had gotten there. On my way, I passed the room where I had seen Clue. Now the doors was wide open, giving way to the emptiness inside. Clue stood inside the doorway in the same firm position I had seen him before, like he was pretending he was a statue or a security guard or something. You said this room wasn't free. My voice came out crackly but sharp. He obviously just wanted to hang out in the best room while his parents were wherever they were. My whole family was bored and miserable and squished. He'd probably been watching TV, looking out the window, and having the time of his life. It wasn't free, and it still isn't. I couldn't think of what to say back, so I didn't say anything at all. I just turned and walked away, with hot, uncomfortable anger thundering in my ears. We couldn't do much about Dad having cancer, but this room thing was a problem that had an easy solution. and It was easy and it was there, and Clue, who said it was being used when it wasn't, had taken it away. Back in the room, Mom's face had lost the energy it had when we had come in. She looked like she needed a nap, even though we'd been doing nothing all day. Dad's face had drooped too, and Bo's. We were one big, sad family, and it was all Clue's fault. For ages, I'd been trying to push the memory out of my mind. But seeing Clue at school always reminded me of why I never got to be president of his fan club or even a member. I think she's saying that she didn't really like him that much because of that instance in the hospital. Once again, I tried to push the memory aside as I scanned the hall for Zoe. Clue brought her to life, and that was awesome. But that day at the cancer center might have been a little bit easier if we just had the better room. End of chapter 13. We'll see you guys later.